going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute since I made a video. Uh, today, we gotta be doing some maintenance, some well needed maintenance on the 6.0. Uh, it's gonna be pretty much just maintenance all day. Um, one thing I am gonna show you guys how to do, which I've seen a lot of people on the forums talk about, uh, fuel filters. How often you change them, um, how do you prime the fuel system when you put in new filters. Super simple process. Uh, this truck needs it. I do it every 10,000 miles, so roughly every other oil change. And that's another thing on the agenda today. We have to change the oil. Truck hit a milestone. It's at 100,000 miles now. So if you can see, oil change, 100,000 miles. I'm going to need to do a new coolant filtration. I do that every third oil change, usually. I want to do an HO alternator. I don't really know how I feel about it though, because I, I fixed the battery cables and the truck is sitting at 13.7 while running. So, not too bad. Definitely not too bad. But today, we have our oil filter, all of our oil, arch oil, fuel filters, that's coming in the next video. So we're gonna set up the tripod. You've already seen me do an oil change before. Um, so I'm not really gonna go in depth on it, but what I will go in depth on is the fuel filters when we get to that portion. But let me get the oil drain first, get it all topped off with new oil, and then we'll work on the fuel filters. You do have the oil draining down there. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, definitely dark. I mean, it's 5,000 miles on it, so. We're gonna let that drain out. I have the fill cap open, dipstick open. And from there, we're just gonna let that drain out, probably about 10 minutes or so. And then uh, put the drain plug back in, open up the filter, pour that out, put a new filter in. Be good to go. Just to give you guys a reference, this is where the oil cooler mounts up to, this transfer block right here, which is attached to the cooler. And uh, as you see, it's draining out. It's draining out the cooler piece as much as it can until um, it gets over that line. So, But these are the fittings and everything that holds all of the oil in. Those are the oil lines that go up to the cooler and the return lines. So, just want to show you guys that, that is draining out partially of the cooler. The only thing, the only thing with 6.0's that's kind of annoying is you can't do a complete oil change and get every little bit of oil out unless you take off the H-pop cover and the oil cooler cover that holds the reservoir for the H-pop. So, you're going to have about a quart and a half to maybe two quarts depending on how much you get out um, left of dirty oil in the motor. It's not that serious with a higher filtration capacity like we have, well like I have with Bulletproof Diesel Kit. It comes with an oversized filter. I wish I had an OEM filter to show you um, size comparison because it's a massive difference. A little bit of a pain in the butt to have to order a different filter every time. If you buy them in a box of six like I do, it's really not that big of a deal. So. I'm going to let that cooler finish draining out and then I'm going to refill the filter, throw it back in the transfer block and we'll fill this thing up with oil and then we'll move on to the fuel. Alright, so oil is filled to the correct level, um, I always use AMS oil, but don't mind the Duncan. Now we're on to fuel filters. And in the engine bay, I like to start with this one. Right next to my old oil fill, or my old oil filter cap. This guy, this is going to be your fuel filter area. There's one there, and there's also one on the frame rail. I'll give you a reference where I am. There's the front tire, front driver's side. Follow it back just a little bit. And there's your fuel water separator. So this little guy here is 
but we're gonna loosen up to release the pressure. And then on the back here, see this guy right there, it might be a little dark, but that is a black cap. And it has your main fuel supply filter in there. So we're gonna loosen that guy up, relieve the pressure from the water separator, drain it out, and then we're going to open that up and replace a, put a brand new fuel filter in. It's probably pretty dirty, so let's open it up and let's check it out. I did buy this. This is a fancy little tool. Not very fancy. It's like $12 on Amazon. Um, but it has your little fuel filter. It'll focus. It has your little fuel filter on there and then you can flip it around and it has your big one. Your big socket for the one on the frame rail. So that's for the one on the engine bay. And you flip it around and that one is for the one on the fuel frame rail. So open that petcock up a little bit and it's going to drain the pressure out of that guy so that we can pull that cap off easier and get the water out of the fuel if there is any doesn't look like there is any doesn't feel like it either but keep that in mind for a 6.0 for any diesel really drain your water separator if you don't have a fast lift pump with a water separator filter and everything in it either. So we're gonna let that drain out a little bit and then I'm going to open up that cap and I'll show you guys what a new filter looks like and what an old one looks like just so you have a comparison. All right, so if you're ever gonna do it, just know it's a pain in the butt to get that fuel rail cap off. It helps to have the correct tool uh, but it's such a tight space. It's going to take some time wiggling it back and forth trying to get it to You know unlock with the pressure of that o-ring because it is a high pressure fuel system So make sure you take your time and make sure when you put it back on it that you torque it down correctly so that it will seat but That's the old one And that's the new one But here's the problem and why you should always change it frequently with every other oil change so that's the old one yucky dirty fuel it's more spots than others but if you look in the cap if you can see you see down in there See all the floaties and like the flaky pieces in there? That is what you're trying to get rid of. All that in there. That gets in the ejectors, clogs it up. Oof, bad day. So, I got the old one out. Just a comparison here. So, hopefully it's going to feel a lot better. Alright, so next thing we need to do, we have the top one done and the bottom one done. Um, torque down both. Brand new filters. Like I showed you before, these are the old ones. Came out of it. Disgusting. So, now the only thing left to do is to prime the system and the only way I know how to prime the system is you turn the key, don't start it, do it two or three times to let the fuel bowls fill up and everything, and then we'll give her a start. So it has fresh oil change and brand new fuel filters. So hypothetically, it should run very well. So let's hope it turns on.
It would probably help if I plugged the starter solenoid back in. Don't you think? I want to thank everybody for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope you learned something. I wasn't that invasive with the camera, but I was trying to explain the best I could along the way. Um, I hope you guys can make it to the next video and join me for the next one because that should be a really fun one with the differential fluid. Uh, like I said, I have no idea when the last time that's been changed. I've put probably 30,000 miles on the truck, so that should be a good one. And the guy I bought it from said that he never did it either, and he owned it for probably 10, 15,000 miles. So, I hope you guys can join me for the next one. I appreciate everybody sticking around to the end. You guys mean a lot. I'm almost at 400 subscribers, and that's a huge milestone in my life, like I said in the prior ones. Um, so, thank you, everybody, that supported me along the way. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.